Hello and welcome to another episode of Truly Bedrock with me, Mr. Beardstone. Last episode we worked on this area here and we built up our mineshaft thing which we powered with this wonderful golem over here. And uh, between episodes we've been pretty busy. We dropped off a couple of pandas at Jesse's so that they can live safely with all of these cats and we can get them out of that cramped enclosure. And this is of course the start of our panda relocation program. Installed a panda CEO at Slime Corp, although he currently has a very, very bare office. So we need to make sure we get this place kitted out, which we'll probably do in today's episode. Give the poor guy a desk. We've also dug some holes, harvested vines, built some more mountains, Harvested more vines. And during the stream weekend, we may or may not have tried to kill Tiz during the banner handover. Sadly, he is a very, very, very sneaky fox, and he came up to me with the invisibility potion on and just threw the banner for the handover into my inventory. So we didn't even get a chance to push the button, and he denied stream about three stacks of TNT explodinating. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think Tiz might be in trouble with more than just me these days. Now that we're all caught up and I'm very dizzy from running around in circles on this field talking to you and trying to remember what it is we've done in between episodes, let's talk about what we're going to be doing today, shall we? While recording that opening sequence, there was a slight, slight problem, something that I didn't quite see. I was not expecting that. What? I was just about to, I just came over here to do an intro. This is rude. Right, well, I guess we've got to sell some skeleton horses. Marvellous. This now means that we have three skeleton horses, and that actually might be ideal for a little problem we've got over the other side of our town here, where we need to move the big wagon that has Jesse's tree on it, and I'm wondering if uh, if these horses here might be just the ticket to get that thing into position. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to take these guys down to the wagon. We'll ignore the fact that it's raining. It's really weird. We've, we've updated to 1.16.2, and I've noticed since then that basically every single day, it just, it just rains. It's just, literally, it's just endless, constant rain. It's, it's not ideal. Okay, so we've brought the horses over to the wagon. However, the weather is pretty terrible at the moment. I don't think the uh, wagon's going to pull very well along muddy ground. So we'll wait for the weather to clear up and then we'll come back. We'll attach these horses and hopefully we can get Jesse's tree moved into a much more su suitable location. And despite all the grievances you've given me about cutting down this tree, I assure you it's perfectly safe. It's just a relocation and it'll be back to its former glory and have plenty of room to flourish and grow. Something else that happened in between episodes was that the amazing Jono Smithers has created us some time-lapse music. So you might hear that just starting to creep up in the background now and that's because where we built up our mountain in between episodes I've got a little bit more that I need to fill in now that I've got more stone. We're gonna cover this whole thing with grass at least as much as we can with the grass that we've got and then we're gonna crack on with the rest of today's episode. So I really hope you enjoy this music from Jono, and if you're not already, do go follow him on Twitch and the Twitters and the YouTubes, and check out his amazing music.
enjoyed that time lapse there and really enjoyed the music as much as I did. And once again, do please go check out John O. Smithers and his amazing music. And during that time, we have placed so many blocks. Just, just, just so many blocks. It's literally taken me a day to do all of this. So what we've done is we have finished off the mountain up this side. We've grassed over the entire area around here where we need it. And I've even started to do some of the overhang bits, but I'm not too happy with them at the moment. And I've pretty much run out of grass and dirt right now, so we definitely need to get more of that. Towards the start of the time lapse, I was actually working on this side, and I've managed to build up a lot more of the mountains and things like that around here. And just generally start to mark out where the sort of plateaus are going to be, and where we're going to be placing buildings on the way up. We do still, however, need to connect this all the way down and round to this area here, which you can see I've started to mark out just so I can see exactly what the sort of incline's gonna be like, and then it's gonna wrap around here and carry on inclining. I definitely didn't just hit space and turn off my elytra there, it's fine. And you may have also noticed during the time lapse we had a slight interruption from a raid. Essentially, a, a dude that appeared up here and I killed him, I got the, the what's, it, what's it called again? The, the, the bad thing, bad omen, that's the one. And I got bad omen and I thought, well, I've got some villagers over the back here. So I just went and did a raid purely to try and get some more of the mob heads. This, however, was not the only interruption we had while we were doing our time lapse and putting our mountain together. Take a little look at this. This is a nice little area too. Steal a villager, yes. Yeah, yes. he's not online right how now, pretty is he? It is. No, I don't think so, it'll be fine, no. let's do this. Okay. Here we go, Come on. right. I need to, I'll let you do the smashing in because I don't like okay. getting in trouble. So smash, smash in here. And, uh, oh, I've got look, a boat. There, look, there's, there's a, what is it? Oh, we got multiple villagers right here. Come on, come on, let's get this. And we only need one. Let's not be greedy. Just get the, um, get the boat. Come on. Get in there. Quick. Get in the boat. No, oh, no, no, we, no, no, we, no, we don't need a cat. Um. Oh, what cat? What cat? Let's see. See it. Uh, oh. Um. Um. Quick. Um. Quick. Um. Get in the boat! Get in the boat! Ah. Not, uh, uh, are you? What, what are you doing? Are you back here to murder my villagers again? What? No. What villagers? I didn't see any villagers. Slack. What's it? Sail. Oh, what? Go. Uh, get, there you um, go. You, you've got one. Shh. shh. I haven't. Shh. I, I, I have think questions. we got away with it. I think we got away with it. Just pretend like run it's away. not there. Shh. Run away! Run away! Shh. Run away! See you later. <laughs> Bye. I mean. Uh, what? Bye. Thank hi, you. Hi, hi, what? Hi. Did you just take my villagers? What villagers? No, this isn't a villager. No, he was a zombie inside your um, your thing. <laughs> no, he's, and, uh, he's chasing we me would, down. Help! Help! We were, we were making sure that it doesn't kill all of your villagers. We've done you a favour. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Hello, well, the only thing around here that's ever killed my villagers is you. Oh. Well, and that, that one time that I, I did as yes. well. But See? That's See? Exactly. Un we heard unrelated. all about this. They told us on stream chat the other day. You were killing villagers. Try to tell him it's a zombie. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Gosh. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that's probably not a zombie, but you know, whatever. It's not, he's been locked in a box for the last month. He's probably really happy right now. Well, he's going to be locked in another box soon, high up in the ground, tempting all sorts of things high to up fall in the into our raid farm. So, uh, high up in the ground, high up in the high sky. Up in the... Not in the ground I, I, I at wasn't, all. I wasn't going to pick up on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, thank you for, uh, for, that's, that's, for that villager. That's, that's fine. Yeah. I'll replace yeah, it with a like-for-like just... like zombie at some point. I'll pop it in your pen for you, and uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 honestly. Sounds it's, good. It's fine. We'll, we'll get a problem at all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, not a problem. Jeez. Uh, what What are those two like? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, classic. That is just classic Slack and Fox. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing you may notice is that I now only have 32 levels, when before the time lapse I had 130 something, and there there is a very, very, very clear reason for that, and that is to do with our next project. In just a moment, we're going to head over to the shopping district, and we are going to be building and opening a new shop. And the reason for my death is basically down to the fact that the dragon's still alive, and I needed some endstone for this particular shop. Plus side to this, however, means I did manage to get some stock for the same shop, so we have lots and lots of elytra. We've got 18 there we're going to be putting up for sale and we've kept some shells for ourselves. We've got a couple of stacks kept to the side but we are going to sell lots and lots of shulkers as well because I noticed that there is there's a bit of a gap in the market there. 
There's someone already selling elytra. I think Jesse's still got a few in there, but we can probably do them a little bit cheaper. <laughs> Sorry, Jesse. And, um, yeah, the shulker boxes. I don't think anyone's selling shulker boxes. At the start of the season, there was a temporary store set up at Spawn by PBK, and, uh, well, they, they sold out, moved it. I don't really know what happened there, but either way, they never turned that into a proper shop. So I'm going to take advantage of this gap in the market, and we're going to go and build ourselves our third shop. Ow, ow, oh, I'm not drowning. Oh! This is why I carry a totem now when I'm flying in third person. One last thing before we go to the shopping district. As I said, that mountain took forever to build, and we did some of that on stream as well. And during the stream, once again, pandemonium was requested, which is basically where the stream chat can spend channel points to make me move one of the pandas to somewhere else. And uh, yeah, Mr. Onion now has a new friend. So Paul the Flip Flop Sniffer, also named by chat, just to clarify, has now found a new home with Mr. Onion. So we've got Dear Mr. Onion, this is Paul, he needs a new home, and chat thought you'd have a great time hanging out together. Thanks, Mr. B's chat. Specifically, that was Plod Plod. So uh, yeah, don't give him any flip flops, it's just not wise. And now you're up to date on the panda situation too, let's head over to the shopping district. I've been scouting out areas in the shopping district and the location I've picked is this particular hole right here, uh, partly because it's going to save me a little bit of digging, but it's also quite a good location and it's almost the exact size that I need. So what I'm going to do first off is I just need to widen this hole a little bit, essentially I need to cut off this corner here and just sort of bring it down to the level of the rest of it and straighten up a few bits, and once I've done that I will meet you back here and we'll discuss what it is we're actually going to be building here for our shop. I've marked out the main area where I'm going to be putting the build, and the plan here is to essentially recreate a miniature version of the end island. So I've got an idea of how I want the actual store side of it to work, but for now we just need to focus on creating a void essentially, and actually getting the floating island in the middle, and I think it's going to be easier because I've marked out the middle there, I think it's going to make more sense for me to put the end island in now, and then I'll come back, I'll lay the rest of the concrete powder, and then I'll turn it all into concrete so it goes pure black, and we'll end up with an awesome looking void here. So yeah, I suppose next thing to do then is just to get this up to ground level, which I think is there, and just start marking out the end island. So I'm going to crack on with that, and I'll meet you back here once I've got the sort of rough shape of the end island in, and I'll discuss what we're going to be doing in regards to sort of creating a miniature version here and making it work. A short while later and I've managed to get the main shape of the end island in there and the plan is we're going to obviously turn all of this into more voids so we're going to fill in all of this with black concrete, we're going to flood the whole thing just to turn it actually into solid concrete and then we're going to put a layer of glass in to connect the two and because we've got the connected glass texture pack on the server everyone should see it as basically just a big void but it's one you'll actually be able to walk across. And then the main shop is actually going to be down here inside the sort of end portal area. So what I'm thinking is, uh, there's a crafting table over there, let's quickly use that. So what I'm thinking we might be able to do, because obviously we can't put bedrock down or anything like that, if we use cobblestone in the same shape as the normal end portal, we should be able to get away with making this look fairly end portal-ish, maybe a couple of those on top as well, and... Uh, do I have any torches? No, I don't. But we'll need to put a couple of torches on the side there as well. And we're probably going to pretty much just sort of put a ladder on the side here. But down here, we're going to be able to open this out and actually have our shop inside the island itself. So let's see how much space we've got down here. So we've actually got a lot more space down here than I was expecting. However, one thing that I do wish to do is actually to make sure that the inside of this is not visible with the endstone basically. So I do want to probably take out these ones here. Because we're going to be putting glass at the top here, I think these edges are here are going to need to be black concrete. So that everything sort of ties together nicely, nicely. But obviously I can't turn these ones here into concrete because then they'll show on the top. So that's where we're going to need to bring the ceiling down. And this is going to kind of dictate the sort of size and shape of our shop from where we need to cover up the end stone with the concrete. Okay, I think that's going to give me plenty of space to work with. There are going to be barrels on the bottom here, so we don't need to worry about the fact that that one is end stone and is actually on the outside of the island. And then I think with a ladder on the side here to get in and out, that's going to work quite well. So let's get back to work on the outside of the island and see what we can do about making some obsidian pillars, I guess? Um, yeah, yeah, that should be fine. So it's taken a lot of fiddling around, but I think I've got the pillars in place where I need them to be. So the next step here for me is to turn them into obsidian 
and yeah, I should probably actually go down here and flood this bit as well, make sure that all of this is, uh, you know, looking like a void. Then we can get the glass in, and yeah, we're, we're, we're making some good progress. So, yeah, time for some obsidian. So I've got a couple of the pillars in, and I decided to go ahead and just put all of the concrete in first so we can get this looking proper void-like. So I don't know how visible the bottom of these pillars are actually going to be, and whether it's going to be worth doing them or not. So let's get all this converted and see how that looks once we're done. Okay, we have our void mixed in there now, and you can still see the obsidian pillars quite well, so I think I will continue those through the thing. I'll try and save as much obsidian as possible though, because we don't have loads, but I reckon we can probably get away with this, so I'm just going to carry on with replacing all of these for now. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring you back here in just a moment once we've got all this in. So we've got all our pillars up, we are making good progress here, and the pillars themselves also continue underneath, as you saw on the first two, I've done that all the way around as well. So I think the next thing to do is a combination of getting the glass in place so that we don't keep falling down into the void because that's starting to get quite annoying now. And secondly, of course, some of the pillars have cages on and if we do that, look at that, I think that works really well, like tiny little cages. We can't of course put an end crystal inside them but then that's probably just asking for trouble anyway. So I think just, what, four of the pillars with those cages on would work quite well, so let's get that sorted. We've got all the glass in, so this is now a lot safer to walk on, and I can worry less about falling into the void. And I've also put it over the top of the middle bit here as well. I actually need another centerpiece to go there, because there's a bit of a gap. Let me quickly get one of those. Okay, and we've also got the ladder here, which is going to be the entrance to the shop. So let me fill that in, just because that's weird. So next thing to do, I guess, is to actually put in the um, sort of barrels that the stock's going to be going in. So let's get those through. The next thing to do is to restock. So let's get everything that we've got currently on us in there. I do need to go back to our base and actually get the chorus fruit because I was silly and I left it there. And once we've done this, we're not quite finished outside yet. There's still a couple more things I wish to do out there. But I, once again, need to go back to the base because I've forgotten to bring some of the things I need in order to make that happen. The last thing I need to do is actually up here. So you can probably guess what I'm doing just by the colour of the glass that I'm using here. So let's see if I can actually... Uh, yep, yeah, let's, let's, let's do this slightly, slightly easier. There we go. So what we're going to do, of course, is add an exploding dragon. So if we do this and this that will give us the base of our dragon and I'm just gonna see how I get on with this I've got purple and magenta glass I think we can make quite a cool sort of explosion here I'm gonna have a little play around with this and I'll bring you back once I've got something that's looking pretty good or, or terrible I suppose I don't know we'll see how it goes and with that I think we're done so as we look down there now we have a lovely end island and a bit of the void is spilling out into the surrounding area and it blends in really nicely with the asphalt there as well and I did notice that there's a path here that's connecting up to these buildings over here so I've taken out a little bit of the edge here I might take out a bit more and I think it might even be worth putting a bit more asphalt down as well just to sort of spread out the car park a bit more and then the plan would be to connect up a path that basically goes from here over to our wonderful end shop. I'm really pleased with how the explosion has come out there as well. I've put the dragon head and a concrete block in there as well just to, you know, add a bit more to it. I think it, when it was just the purple glass it didn't quite work. So yeah, I think leaving those in there was definitely the thing to do. And as I say, we have blended everything in around the side using some powder as well as everything else and built up the terrain around the back here just so it all flows a bit better. The last thing I did was down here in the shop itself, I did actually have a, well, an amount of endstone, so we've stopped it a little bit for now, and we do need to go get ourselves some more chorus fruit as well, because, um, yeah, I, I, I had to put one on the front there, so there's only three stacks there that can actually be bought. So I guess the next thing we're probably going to have to do is just go get a little bit more stock for this shop, and, uh, well, that's, that's, that's going to result in me dying again, isn't it? So I'm probably going to have zero levels next time you see me. As promised, I now have zero levels. I've been to the end, I've fully stocked up on Chorus Fruit and Endstone over at the new end shop. And we just have one last thing we need to do here before we end today's episode. And that is down here. So the weather has cleared up, which is lovely. The ground has dried out a bit, so I reckon we can definitely go give this a try. But the, the, the horses, um, they, they don't seem very keen on pulling the wagon. I've, I've tried to coax them over the here with a few things, such as, you know, a little bit of wheat. I've even tried tempting them with, with steak. I thought maybe, maybe steak was the thing that they wanted. But it turns out that I just don't think they've got the muscle for it.
Um, I'm sorry, I, I I couldn't help it. The, the, the skeletons, skeleton horses, skeletons don't have muscles. It's Right, anyway, moving on. So as that was a failure, I think we're going to have to look at other options for how we're going to move that wagon. And to be honest, I think we may just need a couple more of those golem friends. We might have to get some of those down here. Or, of course, we could always use some of our pandas. Maybe maybe the pandas would, would, would work. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to give that a try between episodes. We'll see if we can come up with something that can actually move those wagons. And I imagine between episodes, I'm probably also going to be adding a lot more dirt and grass and things to this mountain. I have actually done a little bit more in between clips as well. Just, it's, it's been so hot, it's been very difficult to record. So, I've just been doing a little bit of grind work where I haven't had to put my headphones on and things. And that's why we've got so much done on this. But, as you can see, we've still got plenty more to go. Sadly, that is all we have time for today. We didn't get round to sorting out the office for our CEO of Slime Corp, but we will, of course, make sure that we get that sorted as soon as possible. And I really want to get this section of cliff here all sorted out, so we've got a nice path going up to the top there. So, that might be something we work on next episode, I'm not entirely sure. We've got a lot of things we need to get done, so I guess we'll just see how we're feeling on the day. Bye-bye now.